The primary source of energy in the body is fat stored in adipose cells. Fat is present in the cells as oil droplets. The droplets, stained here with oil red O, occupy a large portion of the cytoplasm of the cells. The oil is triacylglycerol, composed of long-chain fatty acids. When fat is mobilized, triacylglycerol in adipocytes is hydrolyzed by lipase to fatty acids which are transferred to the capillary lumen for transport by plasma albumin to other tissues in the body. Oleic acid is representative of the long chain fatty acids used by the body for energy and for synthesis of membrane lipids. Long chain fatty acids are amphiphilic. When present in a lipid monolayer on the surface of aqueous medium, they orient themselves with the polar head group in contact with water, and the hydrocarbon tail in contact with air. A lipid monolayer is equivalent to a single leaflet of a lipid bilayer. Lipolysis produces protonated fatty acids, which are not soluble in water. When fatty acids are added to aqueous solutions at pH 6.5, they cover the aqueous surface with a monolayer of mostly protonated fatty acids, and the excess accumulates as droplets or lenses above the monolayer. Fatty acids in the droplets are dimers, formed by hydrogen bonds between head groups. Long-chain fatty acids undergo marked changes when exposed to alkaline solutions. This drawing shows that the monolayer and the bilayered extensions of the monolayer consist of partially ionized fatty acids, whereas the lens is composed of protonated fatty acids. Spreading pressure is the maximal force produced when lipid molecules spread on the surface of aqueous medium. The spreading pressure of oleic acid is affected by pH of the aqueous medium. Increasing from 30 dynes per centimeter at pH 3, to 45 dynes per centimeter at pH 8.1. This rise in spreading pressure reflects an increase in affinity of fatty acids for the monolayer, and it is associated with a 30% increase in the number of fatty acid molecules in the monolayer per unit surface area. A reduction in pH would cause the reverse, a fall in surface pressure and a decrease in affinity of fatty acids for the monolayer. Since our earlier studies showed that fatty acids move in monolayers toward zones of decreased surface pressure, we studied the effect of pH on movement of oleic acid in a lipid monolayer. The trough used for this study had three compartments interconnected by shallow channels. The channels were 1.1 centimeters long. The electrodes in compartment A on the left and in compartment B on the right were used for measuring pH. The thin plate suspended over compartment C was used for measuring surface pressure by the method of Wilhelmi. The compartments and channels were filled with 50 millimolar Chris maleate solution at pH 5.4 for the first experiment. The red tracing indicates pH of the solution in compartment A, and the blue tracing pH in compartment B. Application of oleic acid to aqueous medium in compartment A caused an immediate deflection of the Wilhelmi plate and a rapid rise in surface pressure to 34 dynes per centimeter, shown by the black tracing. This rapid increase in surface pressure indicates that oleic acid spread immediately over aqueous media in all compartments. 
the amount of oleic acid applied was 110 times that needed to cover the aqueous media in all compartments with a single layer of fatty acids. Oil Red O was used to mark movement of fatty acids in the monolayer. It was applied as a solution in ethyl ether. When the ether evaporated, the dye precipitated on the hydrocarbon surface of the monolayer. Application of the dye solution, indicated by the blue pen, caused very small transient rises in surface pressure. Oil Red O particles had no appreciable effect on surface pressure. pH of the aqueous medium in compartment A was increased to 6.4 by injecting sodium hydroxide through a side port. The injection caused immediate rapid movement of dye particles from compartment A to the other compartments. Raising pH from 5.4 to 6.4 in compartment A increased surface pressure to 37 dynes per centimeter. pH in compartment B, indicated by the blue tracing, was not affected. When oil red O was applied to the aqueous medium in compartment B, the dye particles remained in the compartment, indicating that fatty acids were not leaving this compartment. In contrast, when the dye was applied to the aqueous surface in compartment A, the particles moved to the other compartments. This indicates that fatty acids were still flowing in the monolayer from compartment A one and a half minutes after injection of sodium hydroxide. This drawing shows a monolayer of protonated fatty acids on the aqueous surface in both compartments and a lens of protonated fatty acids over compartment A, resulting from the application of oleic acid to aqueous medium at pH 5.4 in compartment A. Sodium hydroxide injected into compartment A raises pH to 6.4 and increases the affinity of fatty acids for the monolayer causing crowding in the monolayer over compartment A and movement of the dye particle toward compartment B. Later, the lens over compartment A is smaller. The dye particle is located over compartment B. And a lens of protonated fatty acid is developing over compartment B, demonstrating movement of protonated fatty acids in the monolayer. Fatty acids are transferred into the lens over compartment B because their affinity for the monolayer is reduced by the low pH in that compartment. Next, we study the effect of alkaline pH on movement of fatty acids in the monolayer. The compartments and channels were filled with 50 millimolar tris solution at pH 6.5. Application of oleic acid to the aqueous surface caused an immediate deflection of the Wilhelmy plate and a rapid rise in surface pressure to 41 dynes per centimeter. After application of oil red O particles over compartment A, pH in that compartment was increased to 8.1 by injecting sodium hydroxide. The injection caused immediate rapid movement of dye particles from compartment A to the other compartments. The rate of transit between the compartments was 21 millimeters per second. This is several thousand times faster than the travel rate for lipid molecules in membranes based on lateral diffusion coefficients. Raising pH from 6.5 to 8.1 increased surface pressure to 44 dynes per centimeter in 30 seconds. pH in compartment B remained at 6.5. This drawing shows a crowded monolayer of mostly protonated fatty acids on the aqueous surface in both compartments and a lens of protonated fatty acids over compartment A. Sodium hydroxide injected into compartment A raises pH to 8.1, increases the ionization and affinity of fatty acids for the monolayer over compartment A and causes movement of the dye particle toward compartment B. Later, the lens over compartment A is smaller. The dye particle is located over compartment B, 
and a lens of protonated fatty acids is developing over compartment B, demonstrating movement of fatty acids in the monolayer. Movement of fatty acids in monolayers requires the removal of fatty acids distal to sites of entry of fatty acids into the monolayer. Here, the removal process consists of transfer of protonated fatty acids into lenses. Fatty acids can also be removed from monolayers by albumin in solution, which in vivo binds and transports fatty acids in the bloodstream. This was studied with fatty acids produced by action of pancreatic lipase on trioleoglycerol in a monolayer above compartment A. The compartments were filled with a solution of 100 millimolar chrismalate at pH 8.1. Application of trioleoglycerol in chloroform to the surface of the aqueous medium in compartment A caused an immediate rise in surface pressure to 12 dynes per centimeter. The rapid increase in surface pressure indicates that trioleoglycerol spread at once over the surface of the aqueous medium in all compartments. The amount of trioleoglycerol applied, 230 nanomoles, was 30 times that needed to cover the surface with a single layer. The excess formed lenses above the monolayer in compartment A and thus provided reservoirs of substrate for lipase added to compartment A. Injection of pancreatic lipase into compartment A caused an immediate but small increase in surface pressure. Dye particles began to move from compartment A to compartments B and C within nine seconds after injection of lipase. The initial rise in surface pressure indicates entry of lipolytic products into the interface. Whereas the movement of dye from compartment A indicates spreading of lipolytic products in the interface with displacement of trioleoglycerol into lenses above the interface. Although the surface pressure continued to increase to 42 dynes per centimeter during the next three minutes, there was no detectable movement of dye particles from compartment A. The concentration of oleo moieties in the interface increased about 40% as surface pressure rose from 17 to 39 dynes per centimeter. Albumin injected into compartment B five minutes after addition of lipase had no immediate effect on movement of dye particles or on surface pressure. When the aqueous medium in compartment B was stirred, dye particles immediately moved from compartment A to compartment B. And the surface pressure began to fall. Similar observations were made with aqueous media at pH 7.4. This type of mechanism could operate in adipose tissue, transporting fatty acids from sites of lipolysis in adipocytes to albumin in capillaries. The affinity of fatty acids for monolayers increases as pH of the aqueous medium is increased. Since the spreading pressure at pH 7.4 is comparable to that of phospholipids in monolayers, fatty acids could enter and be transported in a continuum of cell membranes in adipose tissue.